Hey everybody, today I want to show you another cool triad pair. We've talked about triad pairs four or five times in the past, and this is a cool one, an ultra dominant triad pair. Now, triad pairs. Um, to me, triad pairs are like chocolate cake. <laughs> um, do you need chocolate cake to live? No, no. Uh, I, some of you think you do, but you don't. Do you need triad pairs to live? No. Um, are, is chocolate cake going to make you a better human being? Again, some of you are going to answer yes, but are triad pairs going to make you a better player? They're, they're not necessary. A lot of our heroes had pretty great artistic careers not using or playing or discussing triad pairs. So is this important stuff for most of you? The answer is, like chocolate cake, no. But like chocolate cake, triad pairs are awesome. And they make us feel good. So let's dig into this one here. Um, so today what I want to talk about is a triad pair that gives us an altered dominant sound. So today I want to make sure we cover this. This is very important. I want to talk about what triad pairs are, why we would use them. But here's the important part. That stuff doesn't matter unless we know how to practice them and where exactly to fit them into a song. So we're going to be doing all of that. Okay, let's look at this sheet here you can see that the triad pair we're going to use is actually a little different than triad pairs we've talked about in the past. Very often, it's two major triads. Here, you can see item number one, we have an augmented triad. Augmented simply means a triad with a sharp five. So it's a C major triad with a sharp five. It's got a G sharp in it. The other triad we're going to use is an F sharp major triad. So lots of times triad pairs are two major triads. Sometimes it's a major triad and a minor triad. So this one was sort of interesting for me to run across using an augmented sound. So that was me melodically playing those two together. We can actually play them on the piano and it comes up with a pretty great voicing. Now, what I did in item three is sort of stretched all those notes out as a scale. Here's the thing, I don't want you to play them this way, and we're gonna talk why that is, but it's interesting to do. This gets to what is this triad pair about? Like, why, why these two triads? And so when we look at them, we can sort of see like what's underlying them. So we see when we put those six notes as a scale, we get item number three. It's interesting to compare it to the altered scale, which some of you may know, which is item number four. And we see that they're almost the same notes. There's one note missing, one less note. It's an E flat that our triad pair doesn't have that the altered scale does. So this triad pair gives us almost the altered scale. So a great question from you would be, hey Jeff, uh, why don't I just play the altered scale? Why do I have to mess around with these two crazy triads? And my answer is, the, what we get, the organization, the way, we, the way we think about this triad and that triad, those are two structures. Here's a structure, here's a structure, and then how we alternate them creates yet another structure. So very simplistically speaking, there's three structures. This one, that one, and then a simple interplay between them. And we can come up with many, many structures. The scale, there's less of that involved. The scale is this linear thing, we go up, we go down. Sure, we can play the scale in thirds, but that is why triad pairs are interesting. Triad pairs always reduce down to a scale or almost a scale. Don't do that. So item number three and four on the sheet is not really anything I want you to do. That's not something we're supposed to do with triad pairs as far as I teach them and play them. But I did want to let you know what's inside these triad pairs. So when we pile these chords up, we see that we get a C dominant sound with a sharp five and a sharp 11 and a flat nine. So that's an altered sound. So let me just alternate these triads going back and forth. I'll play four notes of the C triad. I'll play one, three, five, three. Then I'll play the F sharp triad, one, three, five, three. And I'll just sort of alternate them back and forth and you can get a sense of how cool this thing is. So that's what I was talking about, those structures that sort of overlap and go back and forth. 
So the important thing is how do we make this into something we can play, okay? It's this interesting cockeyed sound, but you know, now what do we do with it? Well, where I sort of came to understand this triad pair, where I first saw it, heard it, was actually a solo I transcribed by a great sax player here in the United States named Doug Webb. And he played, uh, so this is sort of uh, taken out of the middle of a line that he was playing, but this is item number five on the sheet. Let me play it for you. So you can see he plays up that C augmented sound and then very plainly comes down the F sharp triad. So I've never met Doug Webb. We've never talked. We've never emailed. Hey, Doug, if you're listening. But it was pretty clear to me what he was thinking. I'm not sure where he got this lick, if he came up with it, if he stole it fair and square from somebody else. But the bottom line, it was, it was a cool sound. It caught my attention. And it was interesting to note that it was a triad pair. It was So now that's all cool. What do we do with this thing? So it's important to know where we can use this. Why would we spend the time practicing it if we don't know what we're going to do with it? So it is, very importantly, this is a dominant sound. It is an altered dominant sound. Now, here's the thing. You don't have to wait for an altered scale or an altered chord to come along. You can play this over any dominant chord, especially one that's progressing to a one chord. In this instance, a C7. So it creates some tension, this sound. So we want to release the tension probably, right? So the C7, the tension gets released when we go to F major in this instance. We could go to F minor too. So we know what triad pairs are. They're literally pairs of triads. We know what this triad pair is, this augmented one and this major one. We know what that becomes, a dominant sound, in this case, altered dominant. Not always, right? There's triad pairs for minor or for sus chords or for major Lydian chords. So I've done videos on some of those. You could look back at those. So now we have a sense of what's going on. We see a great lick here. And, um, and I'm going to play in just a minute, um, just sort of a, a great little exercise that would be good for you to do. It's at the bottom of the PDF, and we'll play that in just a second. On Jazzwire, we have a ton of people from the UK and from the Scandinavian countries, so I would love to visit some of those places. So please let me know where you're at. What city are you in? If you'd like me to come by and uh, do some playing and teaching, and we could hang out and do some of this digging deeper stuff in person, in a room with like real people, I'd love it. So please, uh, in, in the comments below, or send an email, diggingdeeperjazz at gmail.com. Let me know where you're at. I want to come see you. So let's look at this last item on the sheet. You can see underneath every group of four notes, is a little uh, square bracket, and I'm letting you know, if it's difficult for you to see, I'm letting you know each triad. So the first four notes are our C augmented triad. When you see C plus, that's shorthand for sharp five. I could also have written C sharp five triad. C plus triad, C augmented. Then we have the F sharp triad, and it's literally those two triads alternating. So let me play that line for you so you can hear what it sounds like. It's a pretty cool sound, and I stopped there because I ran out of paper and ran out of saxophone. But it can keep going. So you can look at that, and you can sort of see the logic of how I'm sort of inverting my way up through the triads. Now, here's the thing. We, we figured out that this is not even quite the whole altered scale. I don't know how many of us would have come up with that line, that architecture from a scale. So again, that is the strength of these triad pairs, is it gives us interesting shapes. All of those very interesting intervals I was playing, major thirds, minor thirds, fourths, that were inside that line. It's a very cool modern sound. And uh, I'm going to play for you in just a second. I'm going to play the Duke Ellington uh, Juan Teasel composition uh, Caravan, playing over those chord changes. And I'm going to play a little bit of it for you. That's a great song, by the way, to do this sort of work, an altered dominant sound, because the A section contains so much of that sound. And the bridge of that song is sort of circle of fourths. Again, a lot of dominant chords. So a lot of opportunity to play the lick, in item number five on the sheet, 
or to play that line from item number six or just freely improvise. I mean, that's really the best sound is just freely improvising with these triad pairs. So let me play a little bit for you here and uh, we'll talk on the other side. So there was some chocolate cake for you. Um, do you need to know the triad pairs? Do you have to know this triad pair? No. For many of you adult students, is this the best thing for you to be practicing today? No. Is chocolate cake the best thing for you to be eating today? Probably not. So, uh, but it's fun, right? So if this catches your ear, be excited about music. If this gets you excited, and if this seems like something you could get under your fingers before too long, do it, absolutely. That said, for most of us, this is not the perfect thing to be doing right now, but it is fun and I'm gonna eat some chocolate cake tonight. I promise I will now because I've been talking about it so much. So yes, this, this is something that can be very fun and it has a very tangible use as we're seeing here. So I played over two A sections of Caravan. So what I'm gonna do right now on the way out is start at the bridge of Caravan, where instead of for you know a really long period of time on one chord, we've got four measures of a dominant chord, four of another, four of another. So I'm gonna play through the bridge and maybe you'll be able to hear where I'm playing more diatonically, meaning more simple inside the traditional chord, and then where I use this triad pair. And that's an important thing for you to do is can you hear where I'm using it and where I'm not, where there's more tension, where there's less. This is ear training. That simple, right? Can you tell when it's a bright color or a darker color? Just that simple. So that's what we're gonna do. 